We begin this half hour with a fascinating interview with Steve Jobs from 1995. The interview was recently discovered. It was thought to have been lost for years, but it's now part of a new documentary opening in theaters today. In this rare conversation, the late co-founder of Apple is unusually candid about his many subjects, including a rival tech giant. The only problem with Microsoft is they just have no taste. We were on a mission from God, you know, to save Apple. I don't really care about being right, you know. I just care about success. Us, too, you know, we didn't know much. We could build a little thing that could control a giant thing. The way that we're going to ratchet up our species is to take the best and to spread it around to everybody so that everybody grows up with better things. Joining us now is Bob Cringley, who did that interview 16 years ago. He's the writer of Steve Jobs, The Lost Interview. Nice to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, you knew Steve Jobs pretty well, as I understand it. You worked with him. I worked. Uh, he hired and fired me three times. So you had. So, so he was probably a little bit more candid with you than he may have been, perhaps, with some other people, although he seems like a guy who never really held back. Uh, Steve didn't have much of an internal critic, if that's what you mean. Uh, yeah, when we did this interview in 95, I'd known him for 20 years, or almost 20 years. So, uh, yeah, I think he was uh, more comfortable than he had ever been in any previous interview. And, and after he came back to Apple, they were very guarded about mm -hmm. letting him out. It is, um, this documentary from 1995 shows us a side of the, uh, the Apple founder that, that many haven't seen before. Let's take a look at another clip right here uh, where he discusses himself in rare form. I'm also one of these people that I, I don't really care about being right, you know. I just care about success. So you'll find a lot of people that will tell you that uh, I had a very strong opinion and uh, they, you know, presented evidence to the contrary and five minutes later I completely changed my mind because I'm like that. I don't mind being wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll admit that I'm wrong a lot. It, it doesn't really matter to me too much. What matters to me is that we do the right thing. That was more surprising. I have the back end of that little bite that we see there that he says, I don't mind admitting that I'm wrong. That's not really the picture a lot of people had, myself included, of Steve Jobs. Oh, but it's very true. You know, it, the process of evolving the products was, was such that uh, there was a lot of discord. My relationship with Steve was based solely on screaming. <laughs> that we that we well, have heard. Be, there was a lot of screaming. And yeah. Especially to be fired three times. What are those? What were those firings like? I mean, did did you deserve to be fired, or was this him being a little ticked off at you? Uh, was, Steve Steve could could interface at any time with about six people, and so he wanted to be dealing with the six most important people in his life at that moment. And if if you were uh, important to him, he would you know do anything. You'd hear from him seven times a day. But if you dropped off the six. He didn't exist. So much talk about Steve Jobs since his passing, uh, Walter Isaacson's book, of course. What makes this interview unique? When you went back and looked at, at this footage in your dealings with him, what, what makes this a little, little different? Well, first of all, we didn't know it existed. Uh, you know, we did the interview for my uh, series, Triumph of the Nerds, from 95, which has been seen in 60 countries. It's a 69-minute interview. We used nine minutes of it. And the rest was thought lost because we lost all the master tapes and shipping. And then uh, the director, when Steve Jobs died, the director said, well, I think I've got a copy of that interview in my garage. Mm. <laughs> and he had never told any of us that he had a copy yeah. of it. And I immediately asked which of the other 124 interviews he had a copy of, and none of them. So he pulled it out, and we looked at it, and we were amazed at how it held up over the years. If you know about his return to Apple, the iMac, the iPad, the iPhone, the iTunes, you know, all of those things coming, uh, it, it really says a lot about Steve and his process. Was there anything in, in re-watching this interview 16 years later that you had forgotten about or that surprised you? Well, I'd forgotten about everything. <laughs> uh, you know, I, yes and no. Uh, what I loved about it was that it really revealed Steve. Um, this, is, this is an unedited interview. This is not a movie. There's no music in this thing. You know, so we have 69 minutes with Steve Jobs, which has never been seen before and will never be seen again. You know, it's unique. Yeah, was it something that stood out to you, though? You have a favorite moment you take away from this? Uh, yeah, I think so. He tells a joke, you know. <laughs> There's, you know, Steve Jobs pretending to be Henry Kissinger calling up the Pope and getting them to wake up the Pope at the Vatican, you know. <laughs> Who'd have guessed? <laughs> Okay. Not something out of a vision. I no. look forward to seeing it, though. It's great stuff. Boy, what a find in that garage. Yeah. What a phone call that must have been. Bob, great. nice to have you with us this Thank morning. You. Thanks very much.